Okay, so I've done several videos in the past on Windows 95 and 98 and DOS games running on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, this is a 1999 compact laptop. It's a great piece of kit, but they're getting pretty rare now. It dual boots Windows XP and Windows 98. But it's pretty loud and it uses quite a lot of power. So now you can use Lacquer, which is RetroArch on a Raspberry Pi, to run Windows 98 on DOSBox Pure. You can see run installed operating system, Windows 98 SE, and it's all emulated and runs pretty well. So let's show you how to install it. So I'm currently running this on a 60 gig SSD drive, but you can run it on a USB stick or an SD card. So let's shut this down. And then we can press the Windows key, close content, and shut down in the normal way. So I need to take out this SSD drive. Let's use this SSD. Uh, so I'm going to boot up with Ubuntu Mate 22.04, which is quite new. But it's useful to use it on an SD card if you're plugging in uh, an SSD to write to, just because it uses less power of using an SD card. So now let's boot it up. I can plug this in. Okay, so you're going to need a Windows 98 SE ISO file and uh, I can't tell you where to get that. And also you're gonna need a serial key and I can't tell you where to get that either. Uh, the bits I can tell you where to get are the DOSBox Pure from the GitHub. So if we drag across this and copy that into a browser, I'll put these links in the description. So let's paste that in. So from the GitHub, if you scroll down, there's a manual install bit here and it talks about Raspberry Pi ARM 7 on the releases. So we click on the releases page and scroll down again and you'll see all of these. Now I've experimented with this a lot and any 64-bit version of Lacquer I couldn't get it to work with and any of these files uh, but this version works with an older version of Lacquer and it works with the 32-bit version not the 64-bit version. So you want to download that, I've downloaded it already and the other link, uh, I've got two links here uh, but the one, the download file is actually this one, but I'll just show you what page it comes from. So this is a list of all the older builds, and these are 32-bit builds and 64-bit. So you want to make sure it doesn't say Arch64. So if you scroll down, they're in a bit of a weird order, uh, and find a version that just says ARM. And the latest version I could find was 3.7. And you're looking for this one, uh, ending in image.gz. And that's the other link that I've put in. So if I was to copy this link in, uh, it would just start to download. So you'll see straight away it comes up as a download. But I'm not going to bother because I've also downloaded that. So if we go to our downloads folder, which is here. Uh, you can see we've got two here. I don't need to unzip the lacquer file because Raspberry Pi Imager will write that image, but I do need to unzip this. So if I right click and extract here, there you go, it doesn't take any time at all. These are the two files we need, uh, but we need to write lacquer first. So let's start up Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS, scroll down to custom, pick the lacquer image and hit open, choose storage, pick whichever drive you want to install onto, so in my case it was the 32 gig SSD, and hit write, and yes. You can use Raspberry Pi OS or pretty much any other OS to do this. I'm just using this version of Ubuntu Mate because it's just come out and uh, I've been trying it out. I'm gonna do a video on it, it is really good. Okay, so that's all written, hit continue and close down Raspberry Pi Imager. So now I'm gonna shut down Ubuntu Mate and once that's finished, I'm going to eject the SD card that's got Ubuntu Mate on it, and I'm going to boot up Lacquer for the first time. You need a controller for this bit. So let's switch it off. And switch it on again. And Lacquer will reboot. So 3.7. And then just close that down. So shut down. So now that's finished, I can switch off my Pi. I can put the SD card back in and I can switch the Pi back on. Uh, 
at default, a Pi will boot from the SD card as standard. Doesn't matter what else you got plugged in, the SD card is the most important one. Uh, sometimes you can change that in the boot menu. So if you have got it different in the boot menu, don't plug in your drive yet. Wait for it to boot up whatever operating system you're using for this, then plug the drive in. So click on the lacquer disk folder and snap that to the side. Then open up files and go to downloads and snap that in place. So the DOSBox Pure, we want to open that folder and we want to drag these two files into cores. Then we go back up and go to ROMs, downloads, and then we need to drag this Windows 98 SE ISO into there. And that will copy across. Okay, that's all done. We can shut this down now. And we need to take out the SD card. So we're only booting from the SSD, which has got lacquer on now. So let's switch that off and switch it on again. Turn on my controller. So now we're gonna go all the way across to the plus and scan file and downloads and Windows 98 SE. Then we go back all the way across to load core and all the way down to DOSBox Pure and Start Core. So press the home key and we're gonna go down to Options, Performance Options, and we're gonna do this as 486DX2. Video Options, gonna leave that as Super VGA. Yeah, I'm gonna leave all that as it is. System options, so memory size, 16 meg, let's up that to 32. CPU type, 486. Advanced CPU core, I'm gonna put that on dynamic. And let's go back and restart. Okay, so Windows 98 and run. Now we're gonna do boot and install new operating system. Create a one gig hard disk. You gotta wait a little bit for this. And then boot from CD-ROM, so number two. And number one on the keyboard and enter. So enter to continue and enter. and enter again and OK. So we can exit from this now. So some of the keys don't work, so if you press tab for exit and enter. And continue. And I picked the C drive. Uh, for some reason my screen capture device has stopped capturing. It usually does that when it's got a strange resolution that it doesn't like. But uh, just follow the installation as normal from this point. So checking install components. Checking for disk space, well we should have a gig. I think I'm gonna go for a typical installation. Install the most common components. And I'm just gonna leave that as it is. I'm gonna go with UK and next. I was getting a little bit worried when it stayed on 7% for ages, but it keeps going up now. So the time is pretty accurate, it is taking ages. Okay, so apparently I've got to press the scroll lock key. Unfortunately, I don't have one on my Logitech keyboard. So I've got uh, an old Dell keyboard which has got a scroll lock key on the top there. So let's plug that in and try it. Scroll lock, and let's put in my Windows key. Yes, perfect. And then hit finish to save that. So installing its driver database, setting up hardware, plug and play devices. It's nearly done. Fingers crossed. Another restart. Still going though. Okay, so all of this looks pretty standard. So I'm just gonna go for UK. Might as well pop today's date, although I'm not gonna be connecting it to the internet. Apply and okay. And I've just noticed my screen capture has started again. So it must have switched into a better resolution. Just doing another restart. So I didn't put in a password, so I should be able to just click okay. 
and let it continue to configure itself. Default monitor, actually it looks lovely and crisp. Okay, I've just restarted because I was playing around with the system. I installed Microsoft Pinball and it managed to crash. Uh, and I still need to press that scroll lock key. So if I press that, you can see it says game focus on. Now I can use the keyboard properly. So if I hit start, uh, the cursor keys don't work if you're in uh, the other mode, the alternate mode. But there is a way of setting a hotkey which I need to have a look at. I'll maybe put a link in the description. But if we go to programs, accessories, communications, you can see entertainment, internet tools, system tools, all of this is actually pretty snappy. I'm pretty impressed with it really. So start and settings and control panel and then I'll go down to system. So if we drag this down and system, I think you can see it's, it's pretty responsive. It is running from an SSD, uh, which obviously back in the day I didn't have 98 running from an SSD. So you can see here Windows 98 second edition, uh, device manager and 32 meg of RAM showed up. Uh, so you can see all the devices and everything are looking like it's detected everything that's being emulated. So all seems to be working. I did see under video games uh, that 3DFX is in there. So maybe we do have some sort of uh, 3D support even on the Pi. That'll be interesting to test out. So let's close all that down, but it's not a pain to use. It's, it's so impressive. Uh, so also in my computer, I've got these two drives. Now the operating system is on C, uh, and so this is where it's chosen to be installed. Uh, but if I go back, you see I've got D here as well. I did have a mess up when I was uh, creating the partition. It did crash one time. And so I've actually got a one gig partition which is recognized by the system. So if I'm installing games, I've actually got two gig for this Windows 98 system. So actually I'm quite happy that's happened uh, as an accident. Now this is the CD. So you could mount any other ISO file and uh, possibly other things. I'm not sure if you can mount zip files and drag them over and various things like that. I haven't tried it yet. I've seen a couple of videos of people doing it on Windows and uh, I need to know what sort of works on the Pi. I'm surprised to get this far, to be honest. But if we do explore here, uh, you'll see that we can have a look inside the CD and we can have a look at CD sample. And there are some demos in here and I've already installed Pinball, but that did crash the system. But all you do is just double click on something and uh, it installs in the normal way. So when you double click on it, you can see here Age of Empires uh, it wants to install. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to play around with games maybe in another video when I've done a bit more setup. But let's just show uh, how you come out of this. Uh, so well, if I shut down Windows, we'll see what happens. Looking normal at the moment. It's now safe to turn off your computer. I wonder if uh, RetroArch will actually detect it or if it just stays on that screen. I used to have a computer that, that did exactly this and you had to turn it off by the physical button on the front of the device so it would just stay in that mode. They didn't use to shut themselves down. So I've got the uh, controller. If I just press the Windows Home key uh, or press the back button, so maybe Windows Home and X or have I crashed the system? Select Start and Home. I do seem to have crashed the system so I might need to turn this off and on again. Control Alt Delete. Oh, Control Alt Delete works. So it did crash the system. Uh, Control Alt Delete made it do a restart, but then it was checking a load of things, so I just switched it off and on again. So on the controller, if I go right, I can select the ISO with B and run. And then what it will do is run DOSBox Pure because that's what it's associated with. Uh, and we need to select Run Installed Operating System. And uh, but we're using A in this case, so A. And then I need to use the Windows 98 SE2 because Windows 98 SE was the partition that messed up. But when it boots from this, it will recognize that top partition as D drive. So let's boot that up and you can see it boots back into Windows. So check the description for any updates regarding the sound and any other things I can find. I'll maybe put some links to other videos that might help. Uh, but I'll also probably revisit this when I've got this working a bit better, maybe installed a few games, um, I maybe uh, revisit this. But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with it and I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.